Hi guys, welcome back to Metien Vlogs. Today I'm bringing you another scholarship edition video where we will be discussing should you do a PhD. I'm going to bring you a very special guest who is actually doing her PhD in her final year and she's going to give us all these details. What is a PhD? How long does it take? What are the opportunities that someone can find? Should you actually do a PhD? And all these questions you may be having about a PhD. If you are interested in this kind of information, stay tuned to this video. Hi guys! So today I brought you a very special visitor like I promised and her name is Sylvia Watikum. Without going into so much details, I will let her introduce herself, tell us more about herself, what she does before we get into this video. Welcome Sylvia. Okay, thank you so much for having me. Uh, thank you everybody for being here and for taking the time to listen to us. My name is Sylvie and uh, I am a PhD fellow uh, in my final year now wrapping up and uh, I'm a Founder, I'm the founder of learnhowtogetascholarship.com, and that is a website where we curate scholarships for international students. Mm -hmm. And we also prepare students to apply for scholarships. We do that through like group classes, through one on one classes. And right now, we are introducing a system where we are going to be introducing uh, tutors, linking scholarship seekers and uh, scholarship grantees. So that is what um, I do. I talk about scholarships all the time, but today, apparently, I'm going to be talking about PhD, which is very new to me. So I look forward to adding as much value as I can and I hope that I the answers that uh, I put here I hope it helps anyone in any way and of course if you have any questions later on something you do not understand feel free to reach out you can either reach out to her you can reach out to me we mm -hmm. are going to definitely uh, answer your questions so I'm happy to be here yeah thank you thank you for accepting to be here with us definitely I will share your details that if anyone has questions they can reach out to you I'm aware that you are also a PhD fellow so that means you'll be you have a scholarship to study PhD which country are you in and which area are you doing the research in? Okay, so um, I'm an international public policy uh, fellow, but when I got my scholarship, I have I was granted a Japanese government scholarship. It is called MEXT. It's a fully funded scholarship for international students who want to go study in Japan. Mm -hmm. So um, throughout the application process, you can apply to just study exclusively a master's, mm -hmm. or you can apply to study exclusively a PhD, or you can apply to study both. So mine, I started with the master's, and then when I graduated from my, my master's, I moved on to doing my PhD. Mm -hmm. So uh, social sciences for my master's, social sciences for my PhD. So if anyone, if there are any questions in terms of like social sciences, doing the master's, doing the PhD, I can definitely provide a lot of insights. Wow. Well, maybe in future we'll do something more into social sciences and the subjects. Uh, mm. But today I wanted to find out specifically generally about PhD. What does PhD stand for? And what are some of those things you do when you're undertaking a PhD course? All right. So um, I come from a, a country where we speak English and French. Mm -hmm. So um, I always understand PhD from the perspective of the French language because they always talk about doctorat, like you are doing like a doctorate program. So you finished, um, you've become a master at something, then now you become like a doctor at something. So that is how I always process the idea of a PhD. This is you becoming a doctor at something. So it's like the highest uh, level of like, uh, higher education that's like the the you can't go above that of course you can do a postdoc later on but that is different mm -hmm. so that is uh what you will go through if you're going to, like to the highest level so if you choose to do a, a phd program one thing that you have to uh first of all sort it out is what kind of a phd are you doing there is phd by dissertation there is phd where you have uh by just a uh, research there is phd by um uh, publications. There are some people who just have like series of publications and they are awarded a, a doctorate degree. And there is PhD by honorary. Like if you go to places like the US, you have so many people who have an honorary PhD for particular, maybe philanthropic works that they've done in a particular field. And then there is a normal other uh, PhD where you have both coursework and then you have like research to do. But most times when you get a PhD, mm -hmm. it is really that stage where even if you have coursework, it's going to be very minimal. 
very, very minimal. It's one of those things where you have to, let's say you've taken the coursework and then now you have to really focus in on your research. So those are like the types of PhDs that you can choose to do depending on whichever part of the world you're at and whichever one that you you want to, to go, go for. Oh, for wow. So it's something flexible, actually. Yes. Well, that's good to learn. So um, are you aware of the career path? Like, for example, someone who is going to pursue PhD, what can they be after or even during the PhD studies? Yeah, most times uh, you will see that uh, lots of PhD students are people who actually uh, graduated their master's, went to work, and then some people choose to do their PhD alongside work. Some people choose to go work, and then when they go work, they are able to find out what are the problems in their field, what are the problems that they are curious about, then when they are able to discover what that is, they come back in order to study it. And those people, most times, they already have like a career they already have like a job and most times when they come back just to study something that they have found out in the field they are mostly either going back to a better job or they are going back for a promotion on the same job so sometimes it really depends on their, their entry points if you come back as someone who was already working which to me that is what i'll advise i definitely will advise that when you get through your master's get out into the working field go work and then when you find out whatever it is that you want to to research then come back to academia i did bachelor's master's phd and i'm just like like, no, that is not what you should do. So uh, when you go like my path, my way, like when you go bachelor, master's, PhD, what happens is that uh, the career paths actually depend on let's say options that are available but most times it's going to lean a lot towards uh research like you can choose to work as a researcher in different research institutes there are research institutes all around the world mm -hmm. constantly looking for uh, research assistants for chief researchers and people like that so you can choose to get into research mm -hmm. or you can choose to um to get into academia. If you get into academia, this is you getting into like teaching. You can be like an, an assistant lecturer. And then somewhere along the line, as your publications come up, you can choose to be uh, a lecturer or things like that. Or you can choose to based off of whatever it is that you study mm -hmm. to actually start up your own organization. I've seen so many startup founders that are either PhD dropouts or PhD holders, mm -hmm. because in the course of them doing their PhD, they probably found something that they thought that they can actually do a deeper diving it or they were able to find a need that the thing that the society can build off of that and then they get out and they choose to start building things mm -hmm. and they become like startup founders so mm -hmm. for me uh the life of a phd it depends on how you get in if you got a career before you got in you can just probably go back to your career if you didn't have one you can either go into being a researcher you can go into being an academic or you can go into like having your own company or building something that you're passionate about like from bottom up okay wow well that's informative and how long does it take on average to do a phd on um standard uh, length probably i know they vary but what is the standard number of years um, I think I'll give it between uh, four to five years. I think four to five years is like the average because it varies. There are different parts of the world. For example, in Japan, you'll be able to do a PhD for three years. Mm -hmm. There are other countries where your PhD is four years. And there are some countries where uh, I know someone who did her PhD for seven years. Mm -hmm. So it really, really depends on the part of the world that you're in. It depends on how you want to take it. Do you want to take it quick? Or you want to take it alongside because sometimes people are raising a family sometimes people are working so when you if you're doing it alongside those things maybe you want to take it slowly or if you're coming back where you've already set up like you already have things that you, you you're passionate about already set up like maybe family and things like that you can just come back and go as quick as possible so but in average i'm going to say that maybe four to five years wow well, okay. So lastly, I'm going to ask you to give us um, your opinion. Would you recommend someone to take PhD? What are the pros and the cons briefly so that um, at least it can inform us uh, if we want to dig deeper into pursuing a PhD or we think um, maybe that's not for me? <laughs> <laughs> I think that um, you should think about it. Think about your why. 
think about why you're doing a PhD. Let it not be for the very um, shallow reasons mm -hmm. why you're doing the PhD. You should be able to look within yourself and find out your why. Because sometimes we always say a PhD is a journey of lows and more lows. Mm -hmm. In life, we say that life is made up of highs and lows, right? But in PhD, yeah. we say it's like made up of lows and more lows. Mm -hmm. And when you go through that process where you're going through a lot of lows, it's extremely important that you're able to sit within yourself, sit in yourself and find that thing that is going to make you get up and continue. If you're able to find your why you're doing it and you're really honest with yourself and why you're doing it also has to do with what are your goals Mm -hmm. What are you doing it because you don't have any other thing to do? So you're just killing time mm -hmm. or are you doing it because it is something that uh, can add up to like uh, your career path or your, or your dream job or whatever. And that is why I definitely advise students that I said, go through the other path, get out uh, where you get your master's, go work, go mm -hmm. work, go experience the real world. So that would be my counsel. Find your why. And sometimes finding your why is not just going bachelor, master's, PhD. Sometimes mm -hmm. finding your why is going out into the world, go looking for a problem, and then you come to see how your studies can solve that problem. Wow. Well, I think that's very informative. Thank you so much for taking your time to explain to us. I'm sure people will have many questions to ask. So definitely I will link your channels so that they can be able to come to ask you questions. So thank yeah. you, Sylvia, for creating time to be with us. I hope we can do many more of these to get to learn deeper and deeper into such topics you know <laughs> yeah i am i am always available whenever you all have questions about phd and going through or any other topics scholarships anything i'm always ready willing anyone you can dm me on on instagram and if you have a question and i'm definitely going to answer your questions all right thank you so much as i promised there you have it all the information you need to know about phd did you enjoy the video Please feel free to let me know in the comment section below, like and comment on this video. And of course, Sylvie has a channel here on YouTube where she talks about scholarships, opportunities and all these things related to her organization called Learn How to Get a Scholarship. I'm going to link it in the description box below. The name is called Learn How to Get a Scholarship. Feel free to contact her, contact me as well if you have any more questions and we'll be very ready to assist you where we can. I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you. Bye. -bye.